Hello and welcome to the Culture Club. I'm Kim Ingalls and we're at the Bowes Museum in Barnard Castle in the heart of Teesdale. This was the dream of John Bowes and his French wife Josephine. Together they collected around 15,000 objects that they wanted to put on display for the people of Teesdale. Sadly, neither of them survived to see the project through, but the trustees saw the museum open in 1892. In its first year, it attracted almost 63,000 visitors. These days, the Bose Museum welcomes an average 100,000 people through its doors every single year. It'll be quite, quite a shock maybe for some people to realise that it's not all things in glass cases, that it is actually art that's hung on the walls like more traditional art of the day you have. It is, yes. I think what people like about the museum as well, you can get up close and personal. We haven't got um, everything in glass cases. You know, it's you not can, all roped off, no, is it? No, you can go and you can have a good look. And I think it's the personal effect of it being a founder's museum and us trying to um, remain true to, to to what the founders were trying to do here. So how do you like the Damien Hirst exhibition then? I like it a great deal. I think it's got the wow factor. Um, I, I really love it. it and I think it, it really would have um, been approved by John and Josephine, the founders, because um, after all, when they opened the museum in 1892, um, this was the first museum in Britain to be showing modern art. So it's really a continuation of that, I think. So, Damien Hirst in the heart of Teesdale, let's meet the man who put it together. Preble, hello. Hello. Now, you are Preble Worthington, curator and collector. Tell us a little bit, first of all, where that passion comes from. Well, do you know, I think I've always had it. Um, even when I was a kid growing up, I was very interested in looking at art and uh, finding out about it. And then I suppose I had a real breakthrough when I went to university and suddenly the world of art just sort of exploded and it was just a really exciting time and place to be. I've always had an ambition to do a print show by Damien Hirst because it hadn't really been done before. And throughout his career as an artist, he's always done these very interesting and amazing and difficult to achieve prints. So I thought um, there's a huge amount of variety in his print work and I thought what a great exhibition it would be to bring various themes of his printmaking career together better place to do it than the Bose Museum. Mm. So is Damien Hirst somebody you've always admired and whose art you've liked? Yes, I, mean, I was very lucky to see a lot of his very early exhibitions, which were um, really, looking back on it, very important moments in his career. And uh, I saw In and Out of Love and Modern Medicine, Gambler, Freeze exhibition, his first showing at the Saatchi Gallery. I was just always really impressed by his ambition, scale, and his sort of uh, no holds barred attitude towards making art. It was very exciting at the time. And uh, look what he's become now. He's become probably one of the most famous artists on the planet. This is a spot etching. And there is, believe it or not, in that work, 162 different spots. Wow. And each spot is a different colour. So when you begin to understand that, it actually becomes mind-boggling, really, in terms of understanding the whole print. And that, because it's an etching, each spot had to go through the etching press individually, so for each print it's been through the press 162 different times. So not only is it a very interesting print to look at, but when you understand how it was made, it becomes really the limits of the um, technology behind printmaking and an extremely difficult thing to do. So it's come out absolutely beautifully and I think it's a really great work. It is a real mix of contemporary and traditional here. How do you think that sits? Well, very well. I mean, the Bose Museum has an ambition to do a number of contemporary exhibitions, and it fits very well with its visitors and what they would expect. And so many different museums around the country are really getting involved in contemporary exhibitions. And so I think the Bose really wanted to be involved in that. Now, compared to the other one, there's so much colour in there. I know, it really is amazing. And, and, and there's no single colour repeated twice. This is a print of 162 different colours um, and it's uh, technically an extremely demanding etching. Damien Hirst has always done these spot works and sees in them a subliminal sense of unease, as he describes it, where because there's no colour repeated twice, your mind is searching to try and find a balance and trying to match up colours, but the fact that it doesn't exist puts you sort of um, 
at um, a sense of unease about it. I mean, I love the way it is all exact. The control freakery in me likes that. But the jumble of the colours and stuff upsets me slightly. Yes, one quite enjoys the sort of grid. It makes one feel calm. And then one realises that it's actually all over the place. And it's, um, it creates this sort of anxiety almost. In yeah, you. it absolutely does. Job done, Damien. <laughs> Obviously, he's not a particularly traditional person, but often the themes of his work are things that have troubled artists for many centuries. I mean, we have in this exhibition a lot of works to do with the inevitability of our own death and uh, the difficulties of being alive, the searching for an afterlife, and all that sort of thing, which is, as you look through the rest of the collection of the Bayes Museum, you'll see those themes played out. I mean, for example, upstairs is a very famous painting by Goya, and really there are strong similarities between what Goya was trying to say and what Damon Hirst is trying to say here, so there is a connection. We have um, his very famous um, diamond encrusted skull at the top called uh, For the Love of God, really presiding over this great tableau of death composed of skulls and butterflies. It's a remarkably powerful work when it's installed all together. So is it not all owned by one person? This is all owned by one it person, is. yes. And is this how it is hung in their house? It's never been hung before. So this is the first time it's actually been hung. So what do they do with it in their house? They've just got it in store. No! Goodness me. Well, presumably, once they see it installed here, I hope they will come and see it. They'll take it home and go, we must find a wall for that. Yes, they might have to paint it black, though, in order yeah. to, go, to hang it properly. But I'm really pleased with the way it's come out. I've hung it in such a way that it does sort of um, remind one of often perhaps 14th or 15th century altarpieces, which are all about the idea of coming in front of a work of art and thinking about death and thinking about the possibility of an afterlife. And I really think the way we've installed it here perhaps echoes that. What kind of audience do you think this will draw to the Bose Museum? Well, we hope not to alienate anybody in terms of um, coming to see this exhibition. I mean, we really don't have any blood, blood and guts here at all. No, no animals in formaldehyde. So in that respect, it's not really a particularly shocking exhibition. But it is quite a powerful one. And I think um, visitors will hopefully be confronted by something, by some um, fear they may have, or by some interest they might have in Damien Hirst. All these things are really... Um, what people would expect to find when they come to see a great work of art. They'd expect to be somehow um, confronted by something. One really gets a feel in this exhibition of the various um, different, not only different printing techniques, but different influences that Damien mm. has had. And uh, one sees a great variety. I mean, what could be more different than the um, spin etchings? This project was called In a Spin, the action of the world on things. And really, he chose that title very carefully because takes the view that the world is spinning very, very fast. And as a result, we're all spinning, and it's about time we recognize that. And so sometimes we're spinning out of control, sometimes we're just spinning like a record spins, and sometimes we're spinning in control. And he really wanted to focus on this idea of spinning. He's done a number of works which are spin paintings, and so this was an attempt to convert that into, into prints. And the best way to do that is to do spin etchings, which is what he's done here. They're all involved in this amazing sense of centrifugal power of everything spinning outwards. But one of them is actually centripetal in its feel, which everything is spinning right into the middle. And so with one very simple line, he takes the eye right into the center of this work. And this work is called How to Disappear Completely, which I think is very, very simple and direct and relates to a number of, other, of his other works in his sculpture, for example, sometimes I wish to disappear completely and the asthmatic escapes. And there's this great sense of absence in some of Damien Hurst's works. And I think this is a very, very simple, very, very simple and very beautiful print. Now, talking of simple, if we look at this one here, this is just simple but so clever. Talk us through the idea behind this. Well, this work is called The Last Supper and it's composed of 13 screen prints. The fact that it's called The Last Supper and the fact there are 13 of them obviously has potential religious overtones. He made this work in 1999 when he was involved in a restaurant in London called Pharmacy. And as he was sitting at your table eating, he was surrounded by pickle things in jars and lots of medical references all around you. And so he's really picking up on pharmaceutical packaging 
and has been able to remove the name of the drug and replace it with some commonly available foodstuffs and also remove the manufacturer of the, chem of the drugs and replaced it with his own name. So it's a sort of ironic tongue-in-cheek take on his own sense of his own fame and at the same time he's sort of balancing drugs and food. Do we need those drugs? Do we need that food? Should we have those drugs? Should we have that food? Is this good for us? Is this bad for us? How can drugs replace food? How can food replace drugs? Uh, it's a very direct uh, and rather ambitious printing process. And again, is this owned by one collector? It is, yes. And do they hang this on the wall? They do, yes. yes. I think there's plenty to talk about here for people coming to visit. I think they will like this. Well, hopefully there's something for everybody because... Um, it's new and exciting, isn't it? And no formaldehyde in sight. And no formaldehyde in sight. I think there is this, um, this willingness to share amongst people who often who collect art. And um, really, this exhibition is a testament to that. People are very willing to open their collections, enable them to travel for public display. And it's one of the ways that I think that uh, exhibitions will increasingly be made of using this relatively untapped resource of uh, private collections. We are looking to attract new audiences because you have to do these days. You know, we're, we're a business as well as a museum. And we have to keep putting feelers out there, see what we can do to attract new audiences. I think we've got some very interesting uh, institutions such as MIMA and the Baltic and indeed the Bose Museum and so I think there has to be a bit more collaboration between them, a bit more of understanding of different identities and um, programs and also there has to be a certain resourcefulness about how to use the limited resources that these institutions have um, to try and make exciting and interesting exhibitions. I have every hope and confidence that it will happen Although money is very tight, I don't think that the visual art scene in the North East will be diminished too much because of it. I'm very hopeful for the future. Well, that is absolutely my favourite. I would hang it in my house if I had a wall that was big enough. It's encouraging to hear Greville talk so positively about the future for art here in the North East. I'm Kim Ingalls, and we'll see you again soon on The Culture Club. <laughs>